Do you know what happens in hot weather? People kill themselves. A massive British study out today says that for every degree the temperature goes over 18 Celsius, suicides go up by 4%. If you're watching this in North America, you're stickily aware that we're in the middle of a heat wave, so this ain't great news. And there are several explanations. The first one's pretty obvious. Folks get more irritable and aggressive in hot weather. More scientifically, scientists think a drop in the mood controlling chemical serotonin may be the cause. And here's a surprise. The other factor in hot weather suicides, booze. Suicide usually progresses from severe depression, as I only know too well and I document in my book, Am I Dead Yet? I too have attempted suicide once. It was the legacy of covering 36 war zones. I used pills. I failed. And that was just a couple of years ago. Another new study today says a stressful job could increase your chances of depression by a staggering 45%. Long hours, non-negotiable deadlines, and a high volume of work. Sounds like, just like me and dozens of my colleagues, who I'm sure also like me, suffer from severe chronic depression. Journalists see horrors in war zones that no, no human brain is wired to accept. Blown apart bodies, blown apart lives. Suffering that is sometimes too hard to even look at. Yet we have to, we look, we report, and we pay the dramatic price, often years later. Now I want to put another personal face to the stats. A friend of mine, Brian, not a journalist, he, he suffered terribly from depression. He would call me some nights and talk and often ramble for hours in desperation. But one night Brian disappeared. He waded into Lake Ontario and his body washed up three days later. Here's part of what I said at Brian's memorial service. Brian was not alone. 4,000 Canadians commit suicide every year. That's 11 every day. Three quarters, of, three quarters of them are men. Most are in the 25 to 45 age group. And there's more. Two million Canadians suffer from depression. That's 5% of the population. I questioned the top mood disorders doctor at Toronto's prestigious CAMH, the Centre for Addiction and Mental Health, were untreated. What could I or anyone do about Brian and uh, about Brian's suicide? About the general indifference and ignorance towards mental illness? Here's his exasperated reply. We're at the bottom rung. Nobody cares about psychiatry. It's like we're still in the Middle Ages. All you can do is write to the government, write to the politicians. But there is something else we can do for Brian and for those living with mental illness, many in embarrassed silence. Talk about it, learn about it, help rid the stigma. Use the word suicide, use the word depression. You'll be stunned by the number of folks who'll admit that they or a loved one are suffering but don't know how to talk about it. Go on the net. Talk to me. And that goes for spouses, partners, parents who suffer almost as terribly as they try to understand this crippling, often terminal disease. Learn how some of the drug companies give psychiatric meds the shortest trials of all. Learn how the newer so-called miracle antidepressants like Prozac can cause suicide, like Paxil can cause breast cancer, like Welbutrin can cause seizures. Be outraged by all of this. Learn, write, be an activist, and above all, talk. For Brian and for all the other Brians who so badly need our help.